how our country and others lack. Uh, for example, future potential in growth. Uh, so here is an economist talking about happiness and growth. Uh, now, let us concentrate on the theme of the session again. We have about 35 or 34 speakers and the time we have at our disposal is about one and a half hours only. So I... It's up to one year. Only 12. So in that case, if all the... Only first 10 you did. Remaining be for the next session. Taken as red. Next session. Okay. That's better. So we will have the... Just one. Just uh, one small thing. I know Professor Prabhat Pankaj for many years. And uh, I have always seen him happy. I throw a challenge to any camera person to catch a photograph of his unhappy face. <laughs> Shall we proceed on? I have to leave uh, because I have some attempt work at my college. Uh, if you have any question, I have given my email ID also. You write to me and I can assure you that I'll write back. Right. Any researcher who is interested in this area or any student who would like to ask any all right, uh, without wasting any time, I call upon the first of the presenters. Uh, there are two authors here, Dr. Anu. Sharma and Vaishali Gohil. Are they present? Vaishali? Okay. Dr. Vaishali Gohil, uh, Assistant Professor, IIS University. Her topic is an explanatory, exploratory study on corporate social responsibility in tourism and hospitality sector. Dr. Vaishali Gohri. So, Namaskar to all, dear person and everyone who are present here. So, my topic is an exploratory study on corporate social responsibility, tourism, and hospitality sector. So, it's only names so only, it includes two particular topics that is one is tourism and one is GSR. So, my first slide is to describe and define. CSR, operating in a manner that meets or exceeds ethical, legal, commercial, and public expectations that society has of business. Or we can say business for social responsibility. Another side it, what we can say is tourism is a travel for pleasure, also the theory and practice of touring, the business shop of attracting, accommodating, and entertaining tourists, and the business of operating tours. You know, when I am doing this research, several questions are kept. These are the benefits of CSR. So when I am doing this research, many questions are stuck in my mind. First is, is CSR, is CSR is a part of a core business strategy of tourism or is it adopted by the board of saving the face value of the company? And do they suppose your CSR initiative or who are the stakeholders involved in CSR? So, so, the objective of the studies are in today quickly changing tourism market, it is getting more troublesome for destinations to be competitive on the worldwide level. And secondly, 
The hotel organization's travel agency and tour operators have a vital part in making the tourist spots. And the last is sustainable <coughs> development and protection, conservation of resources and tourism products. Multi-stakeholder approach, environment of the local people, provide fairly remunerations to the employees for obtaining the tourist attraction and educate tourists about the social and cultural value of destination are the major requirements. So my study is based on Haruti region and Shikhavati region of Rajasthan. So what I found that infrastructure uh, uh, for the physical challenges are employed are it's not there in Rajasthan region. And the foundation that is financial aid beyond immediate community and taxonomic with a positive impact and the income generation for the community, which is lost in the hotels because all the earnings are goes into their pocket only and the environment protections to go with the uh, more and more uh, plantations with a grow green concept and the paternity leave should be grants to all the employees who are working in hotel industry and the rural tourism development very much required as a backbone of a rural area because most of the people are unemployed in the rural area and they are dependent on the agriculture that's too which is very seasonal. Therefore the development in infrastructure modernization and commercial and a new technique is being important during the rural development and the rural tourism in Rajasthan. In a simple glance we can differentiate the poor CSR and good CSR Poor CSR is where there is no employment, no concern of entire effect that is land, air and water and there is a restriction of agricultural lanes and where they are not willing to listen to other stakeholders. Whereas on the other hand, the good CSR is where taking care of the workers, low dependence on non renewable resources and where there is high awareness about the CSR in a shed and where they are environmental friendly environment. So I would like to suggest some projects for the reasons for the hotel organizations come up with the vision of plant, uh, solar energy plants and other the plantations with protect the environment and to provide eco-friendly environment and it is very it is very exclusive which I would like highlight with the full hope that a hygiene library should be present in all the hotels of every region. Because nowadays what is happening in India, especially the young generation and teenagers are diverting to a real civilization in a very speed way, very high way. Where we are forgetting about our cultures and values. So we can revive them, about their cultures, writing them books and all. And it will also develop the habits of skills of reading when readings of the students. And when the tourists will come, and whether it is domestic or foreign, they will also come to know about our history, geography, our values and traditions. And the library should be open 20 hours a day in, in all the hotels so that tourists can read them anytime. If the hotels do some exchange program, so it will do wonders. So these are all my suggestions for my study. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Dr. Goyal. Uh, we now have... Can you switch on the light? Ms. Pooja, Pooja Shekhawat, lecturer, SS Change, Subodh PG, Autonomous College. Her topic would be, is she there? <coughs> Pooja Shekhawat. Her topic is, Corporate Social Responsibility and Community Development. Okay, so we come to the next presenter. Uh, there are two of them, Aditi Jain and Mona Singhal. Aditi is assistant professor at the IAS and Mona is research scholar. Their topic is Corporate Governance and CSR, the Synergistic Effect. Uh, Namaskar everyone. I am Mona Singhal, research scholar at IS University and I am going to present a paper on the corporate governance and corporate social responsibility, the synergistic effect. So we are well, very well aware of what is corporate governance or what is corporate social responsibility but what is good corporate governance? It is something that promotes ethics and fairness in the company, transparency and accountability in all their dealings, 
They are expected to continue generating profit, maintaining the highest standards of governance internally. Now we come to corporate social responsibility. That is, we are very well aware of all the voluntary activities that a company undertakes, so that it fulfills the stakes of all the stakeholders or the interests of the stakeholders uh, in continuation with the sustainable development of the society. Now these are two terms that we are all aware of. But what happens when they are used in a combined manner? What is the synergistic effect or what are the interrelationships of using corporate governance and CSR together? These are, uh, it is rightly said that these are the two sides of the same coin. Uh, it posits CS, CG as a necessary foundational pillar or building block for CSR, that is corporate governance is very important for corporate social responsibility and it illustrates the cross connects between CG and CSR revolving around strategic leadership and stewardship and I would like to keep it crisp by coming to the conclusion that is majorly the interrelationships it says that corporate governance and corporate social responsibility should not be considered and sustained independently if the companies use it in together it will be very beneficial for the firms CSR orientation in internal roots of CG foundation it is basically a very necessary mandatory pillar for CSR. It sets the overall tone for the organization and corporate governance is not entirely effective without a sustainable CSR. Thank you. Thank you. Short and sweet presentation. Mona, thank you. Thank you. Now we have uh, Dr. Chavi Jain. We have now, sorry, we have Anju Singh Chaudhary, Assistant Professor at IAS. Our topic is Ecological Footprint of Cor Corporates of India, Opportunity and Challenge. Great. My topic is Ecological Footprints of Corporates of India, Opportunities and Challenges. The ecological footprint is an indicator of sustainability. So at, global at the global scale, it is used to estimate how the natural capital is depleting. And if we see from the perspective of the corporates, it will, it will help us in improving our uh, performances, setting up strategies and making market foresightedness. Uh, this uh, footprint helps business to establish benchmark and set quantitative targets and to evaluate alternatives for the future activities. It is, it is helpful in identifying the strategies that will succeed in a resource-constrained world, including products and services which the world is depleting day by day, and we will set up standards for that. So this study is basically uh, analyzing the uh, Indian corporates on the basis of the ecological footprints. We are very well aware that the ecological footprint of the country of a country is 0.8. Uh, hectare, global hectare, which is more than the uh, lot of nations. And therefore, India needs to stress a lot upon reducing the ecological footprints of the country. Uh, for the study, for the research, various secondary source data has been utilized and we have used various uh, statistical data from research journals, etc. And uh, the result of the study shows that we should use more clean transport, energy saving features reduce the food and good, uh, goods food, uh, footprints, purchase carbon offsets to mitigate their greenhouse emissions, and they, these are some of the suggestions which are provided by this study. Thank you. Thank you. Next presenter is Ms. Priti Jasolia, uh, research scholar at the IAS University. Priti. <laughs> no, no, we think I saw you. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, yes. Very good. Our topic is impact of uh, corporate social responsibility on brand image. Namaskar to one and all present here. My name is Preeti Gasulia and I am here to present my paper on the topic of impact of corporate social responsibility on brand image. Corporate social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility is defined as a voluntary activity undertaken by a company to operate in an economy, social, environmentally sustainable. CSR is commitment by the business to behave ethically and contribute to economic development while improving the quality of life of workforce and their family as well as 
of the local community and society at large. Brand image. Brand image is an impression of a product in the mind of consumers. Whenever we talk about a brand, a certain image comes in our mind. For example, when we talk about music, the brand image comes in our mind is Bose. When we talk about toothpaste, the brand image comes in our mind is Colgate. When we talk about Mercedes, the brand image comes in our mind is royalty, class, comfort. Literature reviews. I have reviewed five articles on my topic. Objective of this study are Objective. How CSR increased the brand image? To find out CSR impact on brand image, value whether the short term or in long term. My study was based on secondary data. Case study of Apple. Apple is one of the leading, leading worldwide company. Earlier the company was keen busy in producing quality of product and were ignoring the other aspects like CSR, working conditions of employees, etc. In 2011, there was a case of Apple company in China. Numbers of employees were injured due to the, some particular chemical used in their products. And some societal cases also came in front of the Apple reaction was not appreciable. That they, take, they tackle the situation very well, but they have reactive approach rather than the proactive approach. In China, some of its suppliers are using services of employees under 16 year age. Product are fulfilling the functional benefits for the organization. In that contest, both are not affected by CSR issues and neglecting their responsibilities as customers and producers. After the performance of bad image of the company Apple started doing CSR practices. Now, now I would like to share a video on CSR practices performed by Apple. CSR practices performed by Apple, environment friendly material, Apple uh, recycling program, labor and community, Apple ethical practices, education in Indonesian workers, edu uh, excessive work working hours, workers health and safety, uh, energy efficiency, employee assistant program. Conclusion of my studies, in the global best category, come Apple is one of the Apple is on the first position in 2015. The brand value of Apple rapidly increased over the number of years. Earlier, Apple company was busy in making profits and was ignoring the CSR aspects. Due to certain case, cases, Apple suffered a ba uh, bad, image, bad image in the market. Therefore, Apple started taking part in CSR activities through different internal and external sources. CSR activity performed by Apple were, were, were able to build up the brand image of Apple worldwide. Therefore, it was concluded that there is a positive impact of corporate social responsibility on brand image. Thank you everyone for listening to me patiently. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now we have our own 
Dr. Chavi Jain, uh, who would be presenting the paper on CSR and logistics industry, promoting horizontal cooperation. Objectives of the study are to study the current trends in logistics and process of horizontal cooperation among these companies and to suggest the methods which are appropriate for reducing distribution cost as well as environmental impact of these distribution activities. Namaskar and all, my name is Shakti Chakravarti. Uh, now I discuss about the logistic industry of India. Uh, the pre uh, present condition of logistic industry of India is like dollar three hundred billion according to the logistic market in India 2015-20. Uh, the innovation are very important in this sector as the demand is always for more reach and faster shipping at the low cost. Yet the company will need to invest in automation by utilizing existing resources as well. Uh, uh, logistic social responsibility. According to Carter and Jenning, the social responsibility of logistic firms examine three main processes which are purchasing, transportation and warehousing. Uh, under these three categories, uh, the broader six categories are included that are the environment, ethics, safety, working condition, human rights, diversity, philanthropy and community involvement. <laughs> now we discuss about the horizontal cooperation that is the collaboration between the few uh, juridical and economical independent companies to raise the common competitive net uh, that includes two companies of the same industry and the same stage of production works together. These companies belong to the same supply chain stage and normally produce or trade the same products. Uh, they uh, add their strength to gain benefit, affect the process and structure designed to distribution network and this cooperation creates a change of existing hubs. Uh, uh, the limitation of uh, horizontal cooperation is basically, if we talk about the strategy that is cabotage, the limitation is by the local regulation which aims to pro protecting the local market. Obstacles, name, uh, namely like driver shortage, informants practice and the lack of innovation and application of good practices are closely linked to the sustainability and CSR issues. Now we talk about, uh, th uh, there are two examples of uh, basically uh, horizontal cooperation, backhaul strategy to reduce empty backhaul and dead handings. Uh, according to the European Commission, 25% of the market represent the 20, uh, road transportation backhauls which can be uh, recovered by the <laughs> haulers crossing foreign countries during the return trip to home and pick up the loads of the country where vehicle is not registered. Next strategy is merger report. Merger depot similar uh, is basically the merging of same route uh, similar route depot to reduce the time and emission of pollution gas pollutant gas. Additionally, saving in the routing costs related to the time uh, related to the uh, reduction of time and environmental factor. Now, if we talk about the conclusion, uh, the conclusion is the logistics sector is expanding, import, uh, experiencing important changes because of new trends in market and society. These changes have a strong impact on the way. Uh, way these companies develop their distribution activities. But still there is a gap between the implementation and planning of this activity. And support and basically support from the government is needed for the better implementation. Thank you. So two suggestions I have We can use backhaul strategy use kar sakte by, uh, by the means of that Backhaul dead handings We have to take a back to the same transportation route We can use the same as the cost will be saved For understanding, not point-wise Yes sir Thank you uh, We are now Our uh, presentation to be made by Dr. Punam Madan and Shivi Saxena. Shri.
Today topic is environmental sustainability, drivers and enablers for Indian retail. Namaskar everyone. Uh, the paper uh, is being titled as Environmental Sustainability, Drivers and Enablers for Indian Retail. The retail sector in India is viewed as one of the most fast-paced commercial sectors in the world. Retail is the second largest in terms of employment, providing uh, livelihoods to over 3.3% of the Indian population. The market share of organized retail is expected to grow to 30% by 2030. As the organized retail sector in India expands, so will the influence of these global players and their approach towards corporate responsibility and sustainability practices. The Indian retail as uh, 2012, it was or uh, the organized retail were, was uh, 6% while the unorganized retail was 94% which is, uh, which is to be raised by 2030 to 30% organized retail and 70% unorganized retail. The objectives of my study is uh, the, to research about the environmental sustainability among the Indian retailers, to find out the sustainability initiatives taken by the Indian retail sector, to study about the existing drivers for environmental sustainability in the Indian retail market, and to research about the enablers in the Indian retail sector. Environmental sustainability in Indian retail is become a core consideration for the Indian retail industry, influencing their strategy, operations, workforce engagement and relationship with the consumers and communities. Consumers have become progressively more concerned about the environmental and social impact of their spending decisions. This concern has manifested in an increased demand for environmentally friendly products and a trend towards eco-labeling based on widely recognized standards. Consumers have expressed real interest in making greener purchases. The drivers for the Indian retail sector towards the sustainability are, first and foremost is the cost reduction. Retailers have lowered their cost base by reducing resource use such as electricity and fuel consumption, eliminating waste, introducing innovative ways of supply chain management and improving efficiency in packaging. Enhancing reputation. Consumers are forcing retailers to assess all aspects of their suppliers' operations in, or, in order to make them greener. Uh, regulatory pressure. Proper training to employees on handling hazardous waste and its disposal will aid to the sustainable environment in retail. NGO pressure. Reports published by NGOs and campaigns on environmental issues have put pressure on companies to take progressive action on sustainability. The media pressure, concerns raised by print and electronic media have also driven some of the largest retailers to adopt sustainability initiatives. <coughs> risk mitigation, sustainability helps in identifying potential risk so that strategies can be prepared to deal with them. The initiatives taken by the Indian retail sector towards the environmental sustainability are these practices in the Indian retail sector are still in their budding stage. With the exception of the Aditya Birla group, sustainability is not a core strategic focus for most Indian retailers. A significant push to this thought process is being laid by the entry of global retail giants like Marks and & Spencers and IKEA with well-defined sustainability agendas which resonate through their supply chains. For Indian retailers, some of the most important drivers for sustainability include reduction of costs, management of scarce natural resource and regulatory pressure. The enablers in Indian retail sector the use of LED lights in stores, relying on sunlight during the daytime and installing better refrigeration systems are some of the steps that have been taken by Indian retailers to reduce energy consumption in their stores. Indian retailers are also proactive in, in minimizing wastage in packaging. For example, the retail wing of Aditya Birla Group believes that the overall weight of packaging, particularly in the apparel segment, 
um, is sometimes greater than the product itself and is therefore trying to reduce the weight of its packaging. Reliance Retail is using handmade recyclable materials as well as recycled paper in packaging. All the retailers have uh, priced the consumption of plastic carry bags as per government regulations. This has reduced the consumption of plastic bags by 30 to 40 percent, raising our awareness among consumers about the environmental impact of their spending decisions will be key in pushing forward the integrations of sustainability into the core business strategies of Indian retailers. Increase in prices of raw material resources including electricity and water tariffs will increase costs thereby progressively reducing profit margins. The conclusion uh, of my study is growing consumer awareness is driving demand for greener products. Where and how companies source their commodities and manufacture their product are emerging as key criteria in purchasing decision of the buyers. Following the success of some of the environmental sustainability initiatives from global retailers uh, will drive the demand of adapting the global best practices to suit the Indian market. The goals of being an efficient and profitable business and a group good driver of the environment can go hand in hand and adopting a business strategy with sustainability at its core has long term commercial and environmental benefits. The Indian organized retail sector is expected to grow rapidly in the coming years. The entry of global retail giants like IKEA, Marks and Spencers, Carrefour and others will see sustainability move from being perceived as a cost center to an area driving commercial opportunity and long term business success. Thanks a lot. Thank you Sweet, for uh, giving us an idea about how the retail sector is uh, doing its best to preserve the environment and promote sustainability. Uh, now we call upon Ms. Iti Gaur, Assistant Professor at the IIS. Her topic would be Corporate Social Responsibility and Education in India, CSR and Education. Good morning, my name is Topic for the, the title for my paper is CSR and Education in India. CSR in the Indian context is all about engagement of business firm in social responsibilities or I can say social activities over its nucleus industrial objectives. Contemporary education system of the nation is facing some challenges like adopting ways for faculty retention, training and restricted budgets. This paves the way for the business firms to get engaged <coughs> with the academic sector of the nation and fulfill its criteria for corporate social responsibility. Companies get involved in the education sector for a number of strategic reasons, which includes building a positive reputation and goodwill among consumers, employees, investors, stakeholders, etc. And also to develop strong recognition or to establish the company as an industry leader. Various journals, articles and websites have been accessed to collect the information for the study. India needs to restructure the education system at all the levels, that is elementary, secondary and higher education level. This is possible if business firm comes in front and also perform their responsibilities towards the society. I suggest that there should be more transparency, transparency in the entire process. Like all of us are really aware that companies are taking due initiative, but the entire process is not transparent enough. And due to lack of transparency, the general public is not able to trust where exactly their money is going to the channel of companies and which is making this process and this whole initiative a big failure. Thank you. Thank you. I now call upon Dr. Minakshi Sharma and Surabhi Mittal. Corporate governance and intervention to defend social environment. A case study of NTPC. Namaskar everyone. My topic is on corporate governance and intervention to defend social environment, a case study of NTPC. In the present day times, the CSR aims to clarify and highlight issues, especially or particularly relevant to social and ecological welfare, keeping in full view the economic advantages of these stakeholders. Present research 
highlights diverse interaction to corporate governance at NTPC and partner administration and respectability conduct in the meeting room and officials workplace. The point of the present study is to clarify and examine the suggestions in the above statement. It will likewise give arguments in light of moral issues and will uphold the circumstantial analysis. Prison study found that should develop and adopt policies and include environmental protection, ethical training programs, and so on. Such compliance mechanism helps develop and will corporate image and reputation, gain loyalty and trust from the customers or consumers, and landing competent commitment to employees. Ethical compliance mechanism contributes to stability and growth since it instills confidence, management, leadership, and administrations are essentially ethical tasks. The focus of the virtue in governance is to establish a series of practical response which depends on the consistent application of core values and principles as well as commitment to ethical business practices. Thank you. Now I invite doc, Dr. Isha Sharma. Her topic is CSR case study. Social Responsibility, a case study of organized retail retailers in India. Corporate uh, Social Responsibility is a corporation's initiative to evaluate and take duty for the company's effect on eco-friendly and social well-being. These are few SR, uh, CSR initiatives, which is uh, employee-focused initiative, market initiatives, uh, society initiatives, environmentally initiatives, and product focus initiatives. These are the initiatives which has been taken by organized retailers in India. The, in that, that is, there is a shop stop. Uh, organized retailer like shop stop provides huge employment opportunities and is considered one of the fastest growing sector in India. It has formulated energy ma uh, management policy by the use of advanced monitoring and control tool to avoid wastage. <laughs> Apart from it, they have also invested in rainwater harvesting. Uh, there is a future group. They have also taken initiatives uh, for distributing a food packets during the floods. They have taken uh, women, empower uh, women uh, empowerment initiatives. These are the objectives to highlight corporate social responsibility of the Indian organized retailers to study the growth of corporate social responsibility in India to show that corporate social responsibility can be used as a strategic tool to create a differential advantage over competitors in the organized retail sector. This is the literature review. Now this is the conclusion. The concept of corporate social responsibility has gained prominence from all avenues. The present social marketing concept of companies is constantly developing and has given rise to a new concept of social, uh, corporate social responsibility. Many of the leading corporations across the world has realized the importance of being associated with socially uh, relevant causes as means of promoting their brands. These are a few suggestions. Organizations and government must realize the significance of CSR for success in its endeavor to uplift the downtrodden society. Industry should also engage employees to help achieve the sustainability agenda through awareness programs and incentives that promote innovation. They should also improve efficiency of resources such as energy, water, waste, packaging and transportation. Retail industry must have ensured 
uh, sustainable development into env environmental, social, and economical areas. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nisha. We will invite now. Switch on the light. Dr. Ruchi Jain, please. Tanya Kelly. And Tanya Kelly. Hi, Tanya. She is not well. She is in hospital. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Ruchi, why CSR? Reasons forcing CSR practices in India. Nusha, one and all, I am Dr. Ruchi Jain. My paper is more of an article, it's secondary database, as well as it was supposed to be, I mean, presented by my student who is in hospital. So, uh, and, and there is a paucity of time also. So I'm there, there only reading the crux of the paper. Um, basically, CSR has been captioned under many names, including strategic philanthropy, corporate citizenship, social responsibility, and other monikers. As the name implies, each carries with it a certain perspective on the role of business in society. CSR is not only drawing the corporate magnet into its circumference, but it also luring educationists, social activists, reformists from all over the world to delve deeper into it. Changing market scenario, globalization, ethical consumerisms, all are adding heat to the CSR concept. More and more organizations are showing their commitments towards CSR either for enhancing their corporate image or to be in competition. The importance of CSR is increasing in Indian corporate scenario because organizations have realized that ultimate goal is not profit making but trust building is viable and assertable with social societal relationship. My paper was analyzing the present CSR status in India and focus on the reasons that forces companies to adopt CSR practices. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mishra. Now, we invite Manisha Soni, research scholar. Her topic is the effect of reward system and CSR on employee motivation. Good morning, everyone. I'm Manisha Soni from IIS University. The economic development of any organization or nation depends upon the exploitation of human resources. Human resource in any organization play a most crucial role so that motivation of the employee should develop in a professional way. This paper is highlight the relationship between the employee motivation, reward management and CSR. Employee is primary and important stakeholder who directly give his great potential and contribution to the success of the company. Objective of the study. The objective of the study is highlight the relationship between reward management, CSR employee motivation, and how an organization retain his employee motivated. Employee motivation. In general way, this is a force or influence that causes someone to do something. According to Greg Jones, Jennifer George, psychological forces that determine the direction of a person's behavior, a person's level of effort, and a person's level of persistence in the face of obstacles. CSR. CSR is a system of rules, practices, and processes by which a company is directed and controlled. The term of CSR became popular in 1960s and has remained used indiscriminately by many to cover legal and moral responsibilities. The two types of CSR, internal CSR and external CSR. The researcher verified a positive impact of CSR activities on employee satisfaction, teamwork, self-esteem, maintenance, trustworthiness and psychometric need of interacting employee drive and loyalty. And these ideas are linked with employee motivation. External CSR. External CSR means the effort a company makes to manage its responsibility with the external world. Now a day the customer not only satisfied by good product and services, but they also want a satisfied level and process of complaint, suggestion, on and proposal that build relationship with organization. Now we present some approaches related to CSR. CSR is value creation, CSR is risk management, CSR is corporate philanthropic, reward management. Reward management is concerned with the formulation and implementation of strategy and policies 
that and to reward people fairly, equitable and consistently in accordance with their value to the organization. We also have both uh, reward system, external reward and internal reward. Now, how can an organization improve the motivation of his employee through the CSR activities? Create a healthy and competitive environment in the organization. Give chance to the employee to lead the team. Recognize attitude. Organize the employee referral programs. Apply the CSR inside the company. Convert sick days to report. Make a visible and transparent atmosphere among the executive team. Encourage the initiatives. Spread the positivity of CSR. Conclusion. Now we conclude that company is also interested in CSR because it improves company's own image and reputation in the society. CSR makes perfect balance between organization and their stakeholders. The employees also feel like a part of their company and more emotionally engaged into CSR initiative and feel a stronger association with the company. By the CSR activities, company can retain the employee and get the good profitable pro uh, business. With the reward system, company increase employee satisfaction and motivation to achieve the business goal. It increases the employee to perform their job with greater responsibility and higher productivity. So the both are important tool of employee motivation. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha. Uh, I would now take up only one more presentation before concluding the session because we are short of time. Uh, I will announce the names of the presenters who would be presenting in the next session. Okay, and after that, we will call upon Blessy Roy to make a presentation. The names of the remaining presenters are uh, Sarabjit Kaur Gogya and Nitish Chauhan, Ashmi Chhabra, Deepak Kumawat. Deepak or Deepa? Deepak Kumar, uh, Kinesha Devani, Pooja Sharma, Rashi Bishnoi, Yamini Surolia, Deepakshi Sharma, Julie Chantnani, Sabrish Raju, Sashi Singhal, then next paper is Chavi Jain and uh, what is this? Mani. Shetty. I think this is useless to all the remaining paper presenters have to present their papers in the next session. I am not reading out the names from the list. Uh, now we invite Blessy Roy to make her presentation. The topic is CSR and Community Development. commitment by business to behave ethically and contribute to economical development while improving the quality of life of the workforce and their families, local communities and the social society at large. The various objectives are to understand the concept of CSR, to determine the challenges, to examine the CSR in practices and its impact on community development and to study the policies of government CSR in India. These are the various basic constitutes of CSR, that is that they contribute to the, the, towards the sustainable development and thus making a desirable social change and then improving a, towards the social environment. These are the various benefits of CSR that, are, that they help in increasing the employee's loyalty and retention, quality of products and services are increased, the customer loyalties are increased and the increase in efficiency, business efficiency as, is maintained. Why is the need of CSR? Especially, they uh, help to reduce the social cost. They are a type of investment that generate more profit. They satisfy the stakeholders. They help to enhance the health of non-polluting measures. These are the various key issues in which CSR have been dealing. 
labor rights, in, uh, environmental yeah. conditions, human rights, and poverty elevations. These are the various examples of the companies that are including CSR in their activities that ONGCs aid, enforces SR steals, and various key challenges that CSR has been lacking behind, that is lack of budget allocation and followed by lack of support from employees and lack of knowledge as well. Second is lack of professionalism is another problem faced by CSR. Issue of transparency is there. Thus the conclusion is that there should be a need of creation of awareness among CSR in the general public to make CSR more initiative and more effective. Thank you. Thank you, uh, before concluding the session, I would like to present, summarize the, the speaker's viewpoints and present my own viewpoint. Uh, first of all, as pointed out by one of the speakers, the CSR is a only a Western concept. We have been having a lot of CSR in our country, even earlier. I will give a few practical examples. I am sure you have heard the name TISCO. Now it is called Tata Aran. They are the first company in the private sector, of course the largest steel producers in our country at that time. They introduced CSR about 100 years ago, in the and mainly in the decade of 1920s, so many welfare measures were taken by them and community development. In fact, we saw a very interesting ad when they were celebrating their uh, first uh, centenary of establishment. It was, I think, 2007 or thereabout. It was a kind of a classical ad. The Tata Iron and Seal Company, you know, doing so much for the community, establishing schools, drinking water, plantation, so on and so forth. And in the last, a very small line, we also make steel. See, the, that is the classic ad, the biggest steel producer in the country. The second example, there, there can be many examples from all over India. Uh, I will give you the example of the Shekhawati region in Rajasthan. You know that there are many big industrialists coming out of the Shekhawati region. See the scene of educational development in Shekhawat. In every big town, in fact in every major village, Sanskrit schools were established by these entrepreneurs who were earning lots of money in Bengal, Assam, Bombay, Madras, etc. All these colleges that came up in particularly Navalgarh, Mukundgarh, Fatehpur, Surajgarh, BITS, Pilani. These are prime examples of performing CSR activities and community development. Because at that time, even before independence, there was no government of Rajasthan, there were only princely states who did hardly anything to for the spread of education in our state. Of course, there are many examples from South India also. Uh, the big industrialists establishing colleges, schools and universities. So it is not that CSR is entirely new to our country. In fact, uh, as example was given of Danveer Karna, another example is that of Bama Shah, donating all his wealth for the development of the Mewar state. These are the examples of CSR, sacrifice and community development. In fact, our culture 
recommends going beyond CSR. In this connection, let us talk about ethics. I don't want to make a long speech. Anyway, uh, there are two types, mainly two types of ethics. There are some others also. One is called deontological and the other is teleological. The second one is associated with the result. What will be the end result of your activity? But the first one, which is now at present not very popular, deontological, it can be compared with the idea of nishkam karma in our culture. That you go on doing your work, your karma, without bothering about the result. That is deontological ethics. And of course, teleological is very important also. I am not saying that tell you because the result, you have to bother about the result. In fact, you can measure the result and that will lead to better quality control, better governance, better CSR activities. Uh, then uh, there are so many issues associated with the theme of the session. Uh, for example, one speaker talked about uh, the public sector responsibility of CSR. Well, it is now we are living in happier times that the public sector is being, the shareholding is being diluted. Because earlier it was only the bureaucrat, all powerful ministry bureaucrats who will take, decide everything. There was hardly any role of other minority shareholders or other stakeholders. Uh, then, ethical about ethical dilemmas, I have already talked about uh, the Danvir Karna. Limited liability of companies versus unlimited liability of society. Present and future needs. Talk about global warming and environmental pollution. Today's newspapers contain a story about China that the legislate, you know that Beijing happens to be the most polluted city in the world. Same can be said about Delhi, more or less. We were in Delhi in the month of February and you could hardly see 20 yards. There was so much smoke and pollution and smog. So today's newspapers contain a, a, a news item about the legislators of China thinking of imposing a smog tax, SMOG, a combination of smoke and fog. So I wonder what is this all noise about development that you are creating so much smog, you are creating so much other forms of pollution of soil, air and water, you are, for example, you are having odd even formula in Delhi, that first you allow so many cars to be manufactured and then you ban them for certain days. What is the meaning of this kind of development? We will have to rethink. CSR is a very small topic. We will have to rethink about the entire developmental strategies. One speaker talked about uh, the types of growth, uh, jobless and rootless and so on and so forth. Uh, I will tell you about, uh, for example, ruthless growth. Take the example of super national highways. We have been traveling for the last three years. Now, of course, I discontinued to every day to Kishangad and back to the Central University of Rajasthan where I worked on the super highways. 
with a great speed. But what do you notice on those super highways? Farmers being victimized by these high speed vehicles. Their animals getting killed on the highways, off and on. And the farmers with uh, those kind of vehicles are unable to use, make use of those highways.